thing. And um, I thought it was hilarious to do that on skates because he's obviously going to go off balance the whole time. And being Canadian, I skated a fair bit. And my, or our lectures, I mean, Art Babbitt had just finished giving us his first month's course of lectures. And so we were all into where's the weight in the body. I was weight crazy, you know. If it's a 300 pound bear, is he going to stagger back this way? There's all this stuff. I thought, oh, good, give me the skating one. Dick Purdom wanted the, uh, we fought for it. And anyway, I took it because I was the boss. And he got a nice one. We used to do about three bears at once. Anyway, I did the skating one. And for the first time, I got carried away. I thought, oh, I know I can do this and I can do that. And I rang up John and said, I'm getting carried away here. I wanted to, uh, can I just uh, improvise a little on this? And he said, oh, yeah, sure, good, good. So I animated the whole thing my way. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I was, we ran and we were all falling around. And I thought, I really enjoyed it. And he came in and I ran it. And he said, well, what? Yeah, he says, that's fine. That's very nice, very nice. He said, what happened to my idea? <laughs> I said, oh, no. And I suddenly saw I'd taken a trip on his idea. He didn't want my idea. He wanted his idea done with my, my bag of tricks at his service. Quite right, too. So I took the whole thing and threw it in the wastebasket and started again. And we used it as a... It had a temporary effect, at least. I was, it was a public hanging of me by me to the studio and say, see what happens when you don't follow the brief? See what happens when you get carried away about animation? Or don't you like the little bit with the skate and the little bit where he almost flies in the air? The hell with that. He wanted his idea, which was very funny. So I did it his way, which he loved, and it went out and it won a lot of prizes. And I never thought it was as funny as what I was going to do. But the hell with that. You know two reasons I left the North Pole? Feist, the fraud, the crest, the withhold the fruity flavors. <laughs> Second, I ain't too hot on the ice, man. I'm very proud to say we must have 175 awards. Mostly for advertising things, but there's some good film ones in there. And they're splattered all over the walls. Um, because they're professional armor. I mean, our clients, because I looked like the office boy, they used to, I used to be, um, and I wasn't treated with very much respect, or I, clients would work me over quite a bit. But when we had a gauntlet of gold prizes, and they open the door and they have to go down the gauntlet of prizes, to get to the boardroom, it has an effect on them. And I say, oh, it's a pile of old rubbish, which in a way it is a pile of old rubbish. But it's like by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, what have I got if I haven't got those awards? I've got, I've got nothing. I mean, I've got the, the building and the staff that's in it. We, you know, and an unmade picture. The only, it's, what I tried to do to finally attract the finance of the picture, and it seems to be somewhat succeeding, is that you surround everybody with consistently good work, and then eventually somebody will say, oh, gee, maybe they can do something. Or maybe William, you know, maybe they're capable of making a great, greatly successful picture. So those awards are half the battle, I suppose. But the awards are not the whole battle with commercial clients. Earlier this year, Richard Williams' Hollywood studio was commissioned to make a series of commercials for America's life and health assurance companies. This project became known as The Tree. Unknown to Richard Williams, the woman supervising the project had fallen ill, and things started to go wrong. The first thing I heard was a Friday night here. I was stumbling out at about 7, 7.30, and the phone goes. And it's the tree people from New York saying, Williams, you get your goddamned ass here by 9 o'clock Monday morning. 
I said, what's the matter? What's the matter? I said, nine. I said, can I come Tuesday, please? Because I've got a whole ton of stuff. I've got to be in my... Sorry. You'll have your ass here, nine o'clock Monday morning. You're personally responsible. So I said, what happened? He said, the work is abysmal. It's terrible. It's, the concept has died. So I had to go through three days or two days. Maybe it only seems like three two days of meetings with all the heads of all the insurance companies and saying, it's my fault, it's my fault. And I'm spreading drawings on the floor saying, see, these drawings are terrible. I'm going to fix them. I'll fix them. If I can get on the plane now, <laughs> I'll fix them. I said, well, we can do the job. We've got an Oscar. We've got 150 prizes. Don't worry. This is, we're the only people we can do it. And uh, Georgine's been sick. She's been sick. And uh, don't worry, don't worry. I carted the whole thing back and dumped it on all our people. He said, well, we're six weeks late. The agency has no faith in us. We ha now have to make a talent display, which is also a waste of time, because we had caused it by not starting right, because then you have to allay fear and incite greed and everything. So we did all that, and that took about three weeks. Think of... Um, Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The slow one, isn't it, Alan? Mm. Perfect. Is Wendy here? No. Isn't that interesting? Can I just say, uh, uh, on, the, on the tree, if they won't give us the time, you have to drop the quality. I mean, you just drop it, and then you drop it again. If you're doing two, two sets of leaves a day, you have to do four. The next day, you have to do six or eight, and you just do. You know, this is a, the commercials are an impact business. You're out to make an impact, and they're going to get a great impact with that film. I mean, it's a unique, trailblazing production. <laughs> <laughs> so... Really, just felt it. I think that we, we did very well under pressure. We did deliver, and we delivered well. The money to finance the thief who never gave up comes largely from work and commercials. But the pursuit of excellence has sometimes led Richard Williams to spend more on the making of a commercial than he receives as a fee. Also this year, commercial work has been more difficult to come by. To continue work on the thief, Richard Williams' animator had to become Richard Williams' salesman. The private rooms of a well-known Soho restaurant became the setting for a series of lunches with advertising agencies, at which the animator had to sell his talents. Rusty Owen Jones, newly hired for her organising ability, supported Richard Williams.